really was. How'd that get started in the first place? I was at the ALS banquet. That's when I started recruiting everybody, and then a few months later we got serious, and I called you guys, and we got the ball rolling. Man, sometimes it feels like it was a dream. Yeah, like a dream. The project officially started on September 17, 2005, with a meeting of about 20 alums at J.T. Whitney's Pub in Madison. It was agreed that the purpose of this endeavor was to present a high-quality and entertaining performance package at the 2006 DCI Championships in Madison that would reflect the Madison Scouts' tradition of excellence. The other objective was to serve as a catalyst to bring Scouts alumni of all eras back together in a purposeful and enjoyable reunion. It was emphasized that this would be a one-year-only project. To accomplish these goals in such a short time would take vision, impeccable planning and organizing, heavy time commitment, and clear communication between the members of the project committee. Communication from the committee to the rest of the membership was of paramount importance as well. The first step was to produce a plan that outlined the methods of accomplishing the tasks ahead. Within days, the plan was prepared. It restated that the leadership would have to be completely thorough and efficient in the planning of every aspect of the project so that the necessary level of excellence could be reached with a very limited rehearsal schedule. It was equally important that the performing members understood that they must have their individual acts very much together through preparation at home so that the few ensemble rehearsals scheduled could be effective and produce the desired results. All members were also expected to be at each one of the four weekend camps leading up to the final camp in August. A very important ingredient was to bring together a qualified staff who knew how to work together in designing, coordinating, and teaching the program. Alums who had served as staff members with the Corps before were eager to get involved. In a short time, a roster of nearly 30 staff was assembled, and almost all of them committed to be performing members of the project as well. A website exclusively for the project was established for the communication and distribution of materials to all involved. This proved to be an enormous benefit to the success and efficiency of the project. The months of October, November, and December were a flurry of activity as the other points in the plan were executed. The show concept was developed and all was properly tied together and communicated to everyone involved. The very essence of the project involved getting out the word to as many alumni as possible. The first mass contact was to dispense information at the 1975 reunion party that took place on October 1st. After that, potential members were contacted by email and notices were put out on various drum corps websites. Personal calls were also made and a postcard went out to hundreds of others that hadn't been contacted yet. The brass was set at 112, percussion at 58, and guard at 48. There were also four drum majors, which brought the total to 222. Of these original 222, only eight did not stay on until the end of the project, and there were never fewer than 200 at any camp. Many came from long distances, from as far away as California, Washington, Texas, New York, Florida, and even the Netherlands. The average age of a member was just over 40 years old, and nearly every year of the core existence was represented by a performing member. The group had a combined total of nearly 1,000 years of Madison Scouts performing experience. The new year arrived and it promised to be a very special one for all involved with the Madison Scouts Alumni Reunion Project. Over the last three months, this labor of love had grown from one man's dream to a dedicated organized project committee, to a super core of over 200 members. The excitement grew each and every day as the participants came to the realization that the project had a far greater significance than simply preparing for a one-shot performance in August. It had become apparent that the journey itself was the essence of the project. Every step of the way was of equal importance in reaching the destination and was a major event in itself. As with any challenge, the membership had the ability to determine the degree of success based on their preparation and attitude. Over the following seven weeks, preparation intensified as the final details regarding all of the varied aspects of this endeavor were put into place so that the first camp would be as productive and enjoyable as possible for everyone involved. The first camp was held at Marsh Middle School in Sun Prairie on Saturday, February 25th and Sunday, February 26th. It was preceded on Friday night by a casual reunion at the Coliseum Bar. 
You can feel the magic as seven decades of alumni rekindled old friendships and started new ones. They came from different eras, different walks of life, but they all shared a common bond. They all had a love for an organization that had played a very special role in their lives, and they shared a genuine excitement for being able to perform as Madison Scouts one more time. The next morning, it was cold. February in Wisconsin, cold. And it was time to walk the walk. Rehearsal was scheduled to start at 9 a.m., but it turned out that if you weren't there by 8.30, you were one of the late ones. The camp started with a brief full core meeting, establishing our goals and the plan and philosophy that would enable us to succeed. The goals for the weekend were ambitious, and like all the camps, we were only scheduling eight hours of rehearsal on Saturday and five hours on Sunday. The goal for all sections was to solidify the basics program both musically and visually. The guard and percussion concentrated on half of the music and the effects in the show, while the brass section pushed through the entire musical book. Everyone also worked on marching basics together and got to know their newfound brothers better. In addition, everyone was fitted for their uniform. As was to be the case for every camp, all goals were met and in many cases surpassed. They hadn't forgotten how to be Madison Scouts. Locating and procuring equipment for the project was a monumental task. Over 200 people needed horns, drums, pit equipment, and color guard equipment to perform with. They also needed uniforms, sticks, mallets, drum heads, flags, rifles, poles, cones, field paint, amplifying devices, podiums, scaffolding, ATVs, and carts to move pit equipment, storage space, and a large vehicle to move equipment from place to place. The first priority was to find brass instruments. Because of the special nature of bugles, most players would not have any other way of getting one. The misfortune of one corps was a blessing for the project, when the troopers decided to go inactive for the 2006 season. They were willing to lease as many horns as they had, and it turns out that 51 instruments, including 10 four-valve contrabasses, were leased to the project. The problem of getting the horns the 1,100 miles from Casper, Wyoming to Madison, Wisconsin was solved when the Pioneer Drum Corps lent the Project of Madison Scout's old staff vehicle, which had been purchased the year before. On December 19th, four brave souls headed west from Madison to Casper in an unheated vehicle on the coldest days of the winter, with wind chills of 20 below zero over some of the flattest and most sparsely populated sections of the country. They returned alive and well, having made the trip in less than 38 hours. At the same time, negotiations were underway with the Blue Stars, who were selling 38 horns in the fall, but were willing to lease to the project for the summer. The rest of the needed horns were borrowed or leased from several sources, and about 15 members owned their own. The strong relationship forged and maintained with the percussion suppliers over many years really came to the rescue as they were very open to lending the project drums, carriers, and cymbals, as well as providing the necessary heads, sticks, and mallets. The guard flags were made by volunteers, and some rifles and poles were donated so guard expenses were minimal. Frontline equipment was borrowed from several area schools, and members of that section provided some of their own. All other necessary equipment was provided by members of the project. The April camp took place at Wanakee High School on April 29th and 30th. The goals for this weekend were to continue to perfect the musical program and guard work, as well as the full core visual style. 
The major goal was to teach most of the drill to the full core at the MATC parking lots. Mother Nature didn't agree with the plan, however, and sent not just April showers, but torrential downpours that lasted the whole weekend. Rising to the challenge, the schedule was rearranged and more time was spent on music, which allowed the brass and percussion to do a full musical ensemble session of the entire show by the end of Sunday's rehearsal. Thanks to the use of the field house, the brass section still learned a good amount of drill. The project had its first performance on Saturday night after rehearsal, when a 25-member brass ensemble played Never Walk at the ALS fundraiser Rockin' for a Cure. Since its inception, the Madison Scouts have had five basic uniform styles. Over 90% of the performers in the project were in the core when the last two styles were worn. One of these two styles was the modified Explorer Scout uniform worn from the mid-70s to early 80s. The other was the custom-made white pants and green jacket worn from the mid-80s through 2005. The cost of the earlier style would be less than half of the cost of the more recent one. With some minor modifications and updates, the uniform became a synthesis of both styles. Much effort went into finding the best quality for the best price, and in the end, the entire uniform, which included 11 pieces from hat to shoes, cost only $80 per member. One of the visual effects in the show also had to do with uniforms, as we presented a member wearing each of the five historical uniform styles and carrying a piece of period correct equipment. This took place during the very appropriately titled Remembrance Production. In addition to the two most recent uniform styles, the others were the Boy Scout uniform worn from the beginning in 1938 and throughout the 40s, the Explorer Scout uniform worn in the 50s and again from 1969 to 1972, and the military style worn in the 60s. It was June 24th. It was summer. The alumni project was at the MATC parking lots. It was real drum corps. The men of Madison sailed through the goals, learning almost the entire visual package, tightening down the musical ensemble, and developing the visual style that people expect from the Madison Scouts. They picked up their uniforms and with pride tried them on. They drank water from their coolers. They ate under the shade trees. They visited the tall weeds. They got color on their mostly pasty bodies. It was real drum corps. On Sunday after lunch, the Corps continued to advance as friends and family began to arrive. They took a break and put on their uniform shoes, gauntlets, hats, and member shirts. By this time, several hundred people had gathered on the hill to see if this alumni Corps was for real. The big dark storm clouds had gathered as well, and they were threatening. The guys wanted to do it despite the fact that it had gotten so dark it looked like the end of the world. The storm clouds, however, apparently wanted to see if this alumni corps was real too, because they waited. The project did their first full show performance. It wasn't perfect, but it was real drum corps. We are going to go with it. And it was phenomenal, given the little rehearsal time the group had. It was clear that the men on the field hadn't forgotten what performing as a Madison scout meant. The clouds allowed the men to get out of their abbreviated uniforms and mix with the crowd a little. And then the clouds did their job, and it was time to go.
The show concept was to present an exciting, traditional drum corps musical book that would be complemented by a limited yet effective visual program. Picking a show of Madison's greatest hits was not an easy task, as the list is lengthy. Ballet and Brass and Malaguena were chosen as the bookends to the show because they are the most often played pieces in the Scouts' extensive repertoire. The medley in the middle of the program featuring Slaughter on 10th Avenue, Remembrance, Rhapsody in Blue, and Ice Castles was intended to creatively utilize as many highlights of the rich past as possible. The humorous blending of two of drum corps' most popular melodic drum solos, dueling banjos and Star Wars, into dueling blasters added another flavor. The descriptive intro of The Way We Were and the traditional finale rounded out the production. Much thought and energy went into developing a visual program that would effectively support the musical program and color guard work. Since there was very little time to teach and clean the drill, it was designed to create effect and be interesting without an undue amount of ensemble demand. The design blended current and old school drill concepts into a package that presented the music well, and yet was also effective and unique on its own. The production timetable for the show was very aggressive, and by the end of December, virtually all of the brass book was written and most of the musical coordination details had been addressed. Much of the visual concept, both drill-wise and color guard, had also been developed. The percussion schedule had most of the book done by February and the remainder right after the first camp. Although the drill was not able to be taught until the April camp, it was done beforehand so potential problems could be attended to. The schedule also demanded that the entire brass book go up on the website with downloadable music parts and audio recordings by January 10th. The percussion music was handled in a similar fashion and guard members also had access to the recordings. Drill charts with specific details regarding each chart were distributed through the website before the April camp, and an animated version of the visual program was also available. The Color Guard used DVDs to record and transmit their visual information. On that segment. The weekend of July 15th and 16th couldn't come fast enough for the members of the project. They came in ready to start where they had left off at the last camp. La Follette High School was the site for this camp and there were few who hadn't practiced on this field when they were in the Corps. It was hot, really hot, mid-90s hot. And yet they pushed through the rehearsal schedule and kept getting better and better each time a segment was run. There was excitement written all over the guys' faces as they pushed to be ready for the night's first full uniformed performance. When practice was over, they had plenty of time to hydrate, eat dinner, shower, and get their equipment ready for the performance. The venue was the championship for the Midwest Summer Band Circuit, and it took place at Sun Prairie High School Stadium. The show featured about 10 bands who ranged in size from roughly 50 to 100 members. The project performed last. As the 220-man corps entered the field, there was mixed reaction from the crowd of about 2,000, many of whom didn't know who the Madison Scouts were, let alone this group of old guys. The corps continued to pour onto the field, and they now had everyone's attention. When the company front stepped off, the crowd reacted. When the fleur-de-lis opened, the crowd reacted more. And when the first note was played, they reacted even more. From then on, they never really stopped reacting, and for much of the show, the crowd was on its feet. The project's approach to finances was to observe a policy of no waste on the expense side and to invest time into finding creative solutions to budget challenges rather than spending money unnecessarily. The major expenses were for the equipment and uniforms. There were also expenses for facilities, shipping, instrument repairs, transportation, insurance, copyright fees, and a modest amount for member shirts and a post-DCI party. 
There would be no cost whatsoever for personnel, as everyone involved with the project agreed it was a strictly volunteer, labor of love situation. On the income side, it was going to be a member-funded project. Each person involved in the project as a performer would pay an equal amount in the form of shares, which were due upon joining, and a uniform fee, which was due at the first camp. There was also a minor amount budgeted for income from the limited sale of souvenirs. The original expense budget was about $50,000, and so the members' equal shares came to $200. As the project evolved, several income-producing opportunities were developed and the profit from those was given back to the members in the form of a pizza dinner during DCI week, a great buffet meal prior to the final performance, an enhanced party at the stadium bar the day following our final performance, a banquet at the resort in Wisconsin Dells in November, and a copy of the DVD CD which you are now watching. When you add these items to the cost of the uniform that the members were allowed to keep, it turns out that out of the $200 they paid, they received $170 back in tangible goods. The project also made a substantial donation to the Madison Drum and Bugle Corps Association. Tuesday, August 8th was an evening of mixed feelings as the alumni pulled into Madison for the final days of the project. The excitement was tremendous, but there was also the awareness that the incredible experience they were having and the beautiful environment that had been created was nearing completion. The next four days were so full that it flew by all too quickly. Tuesday evening began with many sections holding sectional rehearsals. After the sectionals, many of the guys went over to the bowling alley and had a great time bowling and partying, in moderation of course, with their brothers. Wednesday began the rehearsal at 9 a.m. at Memorial High School. After lunch, the Corps moved into the stadium and had a tremendous rehearsal before breaking for a provided pizza dinner and showers. The official full Corps as well as individual and sectional pictures were taken before dusk arrived and warm-up began. The show was put together in cooperation with the 2006 Madison Scouts and featured both Scout Corps as well as Capital Sound and U-Ball from Holland. The alumni went on last, and the power and energy just about pushed the stands back. Their tremendous performance was acknowledged by the crowd of over 2,500 people who reacted with unbelievably wild enthusiasm. After the performance, the current scouts and the alumni joined to sing Never Walk Together. Thursday morning began at Monona Grove High School with a short indoor recording session and continued after lunch with another great full core rehearsal at MATC. The evening was free so that those who were interested could attend DCI quarterfinals. Friday was almost a perfect drum corps day. An incredible four hour rehearsal began at noon at MATC under cloudy skies but with a very comfortable temperature. 
A rather large crowd was on hand to show their admiration and appreciation every time a rehearsal segment was completed. The run-through at the end of the session was nothing short of amazing. They were ready to bring the house down one last time. They were ready to bring the house down one last time. After a couple of hours on their own to relax and shower, the whole membership met for dinner together, got dressed, and warmed up. Arrangements had been made with two DCI corps to borrow their buses, and the men rode together to Camp Randall. They enjoyed the extra moments together and the anticipation of what was yet to come. Finally, it was time, and the first man left the tunnel and appeared before the crowd. This started a crowd reaction that continued and intensified for the next 20 minutes as all 220 men of the project entered the field, performed their program, and left the stadium. The audience responded explosively for every effect and erupted in a mass ovation at the conclusion of the presentation. The singing of You'll Never Walk Alone outside the stadium was never more heartfelt or appropriate. The men of the Madison Scouts Alumni Reunion Project had not only met, but surpassed the goals that had defined this quest from the beginning. They performed with a rare precision and communicated their passion to the audience on a level reached by few performing groups. They established a bond with their fellow Madison alumni that made the team effort effective and enjoyable. Most importantly, they proved that an undertaking of any magnitude approached with a positive attitude and guided by a philosophy that stresses always doing one's best can succeed. Congratulations to everyone who is part of the Madison Scouts Alumni Reunion Project. You accomplished the almost impossible. You made a dream a reality. And the whole world is just a little brighter because of it. Congratulations to everybody who was part of this project. It was a great journey. And thanks for coming along on our ride. Thanks for everything. We hope you had a great time. It's too bad it ended so soon. Or did it? Hmm. It's all about me. It's all about me. It's all about me. All about me. I've got a lot of stories to tell, and they're all about me. 
I am the guy next to you on the plane With the big mouth and the pea-sized brain Talking with glee, incessantly All about me You're trying to read It's all about me But you won't succeed All about me By the end of this flight You'll be able to write a whole book about me All about me I just bought a brand new Lamborghini To compensate for my small self esteem Oh yeah, me, 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 me It's all about moi My friend's telephone It's all about me Are broken, that's all All about me Or improperly installed That's why they don't return my calls All about me I've got a girl now who's perfect for me Cause she doesn't have caller ID We talk about me, all about me And the first minute is free You wanna change lanes? It's all about me I don't even see All about me Got my phone on my ear Adjusting my mirror So I can see me so strange with an ego this vast That my head will still fit up my hat Why can't you see? It's just a shot of me The world revolves around me How'd I sound pretty good? I know <laughs>